Hi, Humphrey here. We kind of go on a long spiel about Trump in this beginning of this episode, so for those who aren't interested, you can move ahead to around 19 minutes and 18 seconds. So, more or less. Sorry about that. Hello, and welcome to Hardcast, where the Bloodshot Saga finally gets a break from all the misery. I'm Humphrey Erm. And my name is Chris. Lifeline, give me Bloodshot USA. Issue 1. Kozal gives his fellow Rising Spirit members and the reader a quick recap of the previous events, ending with the idea to create their own Bloodshot virus. A year after this meeting, the Bloodshots are still out at sea, but are promptly rescued by Ninjak. New York is being terrorized by the Bloodshots, as we saw at the end of the last volume, and Ginger and Livewire are there to fight. Ninjak's plane comes into New York, but before they can land, Ninjak starts convulsing and faints. The plane crashes, but obviously all the bloodshots are okay until the real bloodshot gets his head cut off by a bloodshot Ninjak. Or a Ninjak bloodshot. Which one is it? Mm, bloodshot Ninjak. You know, the, the adjective goes first, I feel. It's that whole um, turtle, hurdle, hurdle, turtle thing mm. that I talked about and no one replied to me. <laughs> Nothing. I guess they agreed with you. Yeah, they agreed that it should be one of the two? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I was gonna have one little complaint out here first. Okay. Nah, I guess the... because I read the summary on the first page here just to sort of like... just give a slight reminder to myself and just see like how they like summed it up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I just don't like how they don't mention the fact that he got the nanites back. Because they mentioned here that Kay, uh, she stripped the nanites from Bloodshot's body. Powerless, Bloodshot assumed a new identity, calling himself Ray Garrison. He met a young woman named Magic, and they fell in love. But, you know, he already got the nanites back before then. Yeah, but they can't go through everything. I mean, yeah, they I want know, someone to go read something. I mean, yeah, but yes, it's and, a little and, segment of just, um, despite this, he, they came back to him. No, but see, like, I mean, how many people actually read those summaries? So, yeah, no, I know, but still, it bothered me. Yeah, okay. I guess this is what this podcast is about, talking about the things that bother us in comics. Exactly. Well, like every comic podcast. Wait, there's other comic podcasts? Yes. Huh. Are they better than ours? Yes. Well, it's not pretty hard. Not very hard to do that, is it? No, it's not. Uh, but it's uh, not very hard to be worse either. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, this really. I'm surprised they didn't make this bigger in a sense. Like, because um, this really could have been an event comic. Like, besides just being these four issues. Yeah, I mean, I guess you already kind of have more or less everyone that's available at the time. I mean, or, yeah, I mean, you've got Unity, and that's pretty much it. I guess Arik and uh, the Eternal Warrior are doing other more important things at the moment. Well, I mean, assuming um, assuming the order we're reading it in is sort of accurate, basically, Gilad would still be dead, you know, having the nice dinner with his family. Yep. And the Gilad, I suppose, would be guarding his body. So maybe he'd be too stubborn to... Oh, like that. I thought I thought it was more like in the... Like he was dead like the first time. Again, it's hard where to he's tell. he's like in the maze. Maybe he's in the maze right now. Maybe. It's, it's hard to tell. Hmm. Yeah, it would be really easy if they would just put dates in there. Huh. Yeah, what a concept. But that would be, yeah, but that would, I, I don't think that would work unless it's like one single creator or, you know, a super tight editorial team. That's what I mean. Just have, I mean, this uh, Valiant is small enough to just have a calendar on a wall, you know, have a fictional calendar where you can be like, this is where these people are at this time. Yeah, but it can make it tricky then to move Yeah, I know, forward. I know. I mean, it would be cool, especially if uh, there were enough fans to actually make like a comprehensive list. Mm. And then sort of have like make a cool YouTube video where they're like talking about and while this was going on. And then because it's valiant related, it would get like three views. Yep. 
And it's just you yourself checking on your views. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, as you said, it was a um, what's it called quick summary of the first two volumes. Mm. Not even they want to mention volume three. I don't get the reference. That was the one I didn't like. The one with the Mad Max world. Oh, the one where he was in the dream. Yeah. Well, how would they know that? Well, they put him there. Really, I thought it was Livewire that put him there. No, 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 no. He was called. Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. It doesn't matter. So, and I double checked to see because uh, that's the thing. Whenever you get like a timely, like some kind of like timely reference, I always get curious. Like, oh, okay, okay, when was this released? Oh yeah, the oh god, the yes. Trump thing. It's October twenty sixteen that this issue came out. Yeah. Ah, uh, boy. <laughs> yeah, it was literally yesterday. I mean, we're recording this on the 10th. It was yesterday, two years ago, that, or a year ago. Two years ago? Two years ago. Oh my god, it's been two years ago, yeah. Uh, that uh, pre Trump was elected. <sighs> what a timeline. What, what a great end to the, to the infamous 2016. What a timeline. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's just on those little things. And, and of uh, course, when he said this, like in universe, if if we assume that it was probably a joke. I mean, especially since this must have been written, you know, before. Like, uh, no, no, no. I mean, Trump's been talking about running since like a while ago. I mean, this is October two thousand sixteen. I mean, it was only yeah, like yeah, two no, yeah. But this was written earlier in that sense. So I think it was still written in the sense of um, like in universe, it has to be taking place earlier. Yeah, well, a year earlier. Yeah. So like October 2015, which then would be also around about the time when, you know, Trump has been mm -hmm. talking about running for president. I mean, he's been talking about it. I mean, he's been mentioning it forever. I mean, so much so that like even uh, the Simpsons made the joke about it and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I really hope that in the next election, there's going to be someone running that's named Lisa Simpson. Oh, that would be great. Because then, then the loss of memes means she has to win. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I know I'd love that. Just people like, yeah, I don't really care for her policies, but, you know, it just works so well. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is that the way that America is, that probably would work. Like, that is how presidents are elected nowadays. Although I got to say congratulations to, uh, to the Americans for flipping the house. Yeah, I'm just saying congratulations for the voices being heard. The important thing is with a democracy is that the majority rules. No, but I mean, if this, this is if this means that there are more people wanted this. What? <laughs> That's absolutely true. So you'd be, you'd be you'd be totally okay if like the Nazis took over America if that's what the voices were. Well, I'd be very concerned that the majority of people were Nazis, but. Uh... Yeah, but or are they actually the majority? Because, you know, there's also all this kind of, you know, funky things that they do in America where they restrict people from voting, you know, all that kind of weird stuff, because then not really all the voices oh, are Oh, no, heard, but that so, I agree you know. with. It's like, it's like I always tell you, I love that the story about the Indian election. So when they would have these, like, little uh, ballot um, wagons or whatever you'd call them, like little portable booths or something. And they would go to like these remote Indian villages just to make sure they could vote. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, that's because how you do it. again, in, in every other country outside of, I mean, obviously there are some exceptions, but most Western democratic countries, um, except for America, actually want people to vote. I mean, in America, they don't want certain minorities and certain people to vote. And, you know, that's just the way it is. And I mean, I just love how like, my girlfriend was now kind of following the, well, not following, but she was seeing stuff about the election. Well, it's hard to avoid. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think even German TV was like talking about it and, and she was just dumbfounded by the just like, yeah, that was the thing. Like, like she was looking at these rules, like, yeah, someone on Twitter wrote something about like, here's how to do a good election. Like, you know, put it put, make the election day a holiday, you know, all these kind of different things. And she was just like looking through all of them going like, uh, yep, Germany has that, Germany has that, Germany has that, Germany has that, Germany has that. And it's like, yeah, every country has that except for the U.S. because they try to... It, we're not a politics podcast, we're a No, but that's the problem. No, but notice that. One, one reference to Trump and it derails anything. 
Yeah, because it's horrible and stupid, and I yeah, can't wait. Yeah, but that's why I'm it. also in support for people sort of like again, not in terms of like to ignore, but like, look, is it relevant to discussion? No, then let's not mention because it just ruins everything. <laughs> no, but seriously, right? I mean, what is? How far are we in now? Like, according to our recording, uh, we're about uh, ten minutes in. Three hundred and twenty-two bars. <laughs> Sorry, my. Garage Ben is on mm. bars. Yeah, no, but we're in like almost eleven minutes now, so ignoring like the start and whatever will be like edited out. Yeah, but don't 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 put this on Trump because like you know we do this shit all the time. Yeah, but you know when we do it, it's interesting. Like, like we, we see like a word and then we gotta go on a huge tangent, and we're still going on the goddamn tangent. Can we yeah, just like, get back meta, to the so fucking comic? Like, ah. So, but either way, yeah, kind of amusing right before uh, the coming out the month before the election. So, and ironically, since they had the, what's called the pro-Hillary comic with Faith as well, it's kind of funny how the one-off, the, the one-off panel became more, like, accurate than the whole comic. Yeah, could you, could you imagine that then the writers were like, ah, shit, now we have to kind of run with this. Like, they're like, okay, well, Project Rising, Spirit, and Trump are going to be in cahoots or something like that. Um, well, I've read uh, I've read one comic because I was just too curious about the results of it uh, coming from uh, Valiant. Where yeah, they do mention him more. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, do you mind just a quick? It's, it, I don't think it's relevant plot wise. It was just like a quick thing. Mm -hmm. It's in the new Harbinger Renegades comic. It was this comic with the harder with the hardcore or like those. Uh, so they were like doing some kind of like a battle and then uh, after afterwards at the end of the comic it's like you guys did great the president's really happy and i don't know if it's a real trump quote that they're using out of context like a tweet or if they made it themselves but they, they actually have like with a photograph uh, icon of him going about like good good work you know our brave soldiers you know so something like that yes the Oh, but I mean, that's like... Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it was anything, yeah. like, weird, necessarily. It was just like, oh, boy, now... Thanks, Kanye, very cool. But that's the whole thing, though. Then you have the whole thing there where it's like... Because <laughs> we were discussing that before about the election. Like, in terms of, like, yeah. wait, so... You know, sure, in the beginning, in 2012, with the Valiant Universe, I could believe it's our world out the window. Yeah. You know, with a secret history, you know, since we have, you know, aliens interfering and stuff. Mm. But at this point, it's like, yeah, I mean... Well, I mean, that was, like, the thing that I think I discussed in a, in a certain episode. I have no idea which one it was. I mean, this is all just a blur to me. Um, Probably one of the Imperium or Harbinger ones, since, you know, Toyo Harada does so much. Yeah, I think it was one of those. Uh, I, I was talking about how, the, because of the, how the world has changed in the Valiant universe, um, the elections would not have been the same. Like, it wouldn't have been Trump versus Clinton. It would have been, like, something completely different, and they would have been running on completely different issues. Um, obviously, there would be a, a, probably a huge, a much more to talk about... Um, about uh like like immigration and stuff like that probably would be an even bigger topic just because of the whole new mexico fiasco that like like there would be so many refugees coming to the u.s and like like proper refugees not just like uh, asylum seekers it would be like proper refugees and and they, it would be interesting to see like would a thing in syria still be like that would you know europe be flooded with um mexicans you know that oh, kind yeah. of thing like but then at the same time there's actually some proper cause for concern too in terms of like what's called increasing military budget right right and and that's kind of what i mean is that it, it's, it's kind of hard for them to be like in our world also someone like trump was able to be elected you know, I mean, and this is like one of my, what I mean is like, I feel like there's a lot of problems that I see on the internet. Um, like a lot of like these, how would you call it? Like Tumblr problems that get um, discussed a lot online where I feel like the only reason these things come up is because they, we don't have enough real problems in the world. Like we don't have proper suffering. So they have to, like people have to come up with things in order to suffer 
Um, and this is not like saying like people who talk about the depression online or whatever, are just making it up so that they can, you know, complain about something. Yeah, no, no, but I know what you mean. It's, it's things that like, oh, this is like the worst thing ever. It's like, yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff like, like, like bitching about casting decisions or, or like, I mean, even stuff like, um, I don't even know. I, I mean, I, I've, I've kind of removed myself so much from the internet that I can't even like so bring something up, you. which is a good thing. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so gone out of the internet. It's crazy. Um, but it's just one of those things where uh, I, that is something that I feel helped the, the, the election, like the, the whole thing nowadays, that there's just so many people just, just bitching about stuff that does not matter at all. And, and I think in a world like this valiant world where there is actual war happening, uh, an entire metropolitan city was just flattened by an alien race. I mean, something like the, the Space Force would actually be a proper thing that would have to be considered in this universe. Oh my god, the valiant just, universe it, is the one where Trump makes sense. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> we were in the valiant universe, Chris holy shit can you imagine like yeah i mean a, a pro no uh immigration policy and the space force and all that stuff i mean yeah this is this seems like oh my god are all the valiant writers trump supporters <laughs> no but that's the whole thing i mean it's yeah i mean that's what happens anytime with a speculative fiction thing and i do enjoy these kinds of discussions mm. like it's it's like the stuff i loved in the craft before they kind of went really weird i felt <laughs> no, but like I remember the yeah. whole thing when they had a whole analysis of The Dark Knight Rises mm -hmm. about, yeah, you know, this is a surprisingly efficient anarchy. Like, because there was like all the trash was being taken care of, like there's no trash anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. apparently during, you know, Bane's rule of the city, they are taking care of the trash. <laughs> Which is also weird to have like a rule lure in an anarchy. Yes, of course, but that's the inherent yeah. irony of that concept. Yeah, but I just love that kind of stuff, and the fact that they, they then go to actual real life examples where they show areas where you know there is no government going on anymore, or like where something has mm -hmm. collapsed, and yeah, just trash everywhere because you still consume even though. Yeah, and just like, and again, it's one of those things. Like, obviously, Nolan wanted to make a feeling of desolation, and having a bunch of trash everywhere implies you know people are doing things and consuming. So like, of course, you know, he wanted to portray it that way, but it's just fun when someone like thinks that extra step without getting like super serious about it. You know what I mean? But would the, um, would the trash have distracted? Like, do you think that would have been a thing where, I mean, I like Bane would have I mean, been taken care of it because it might've been used for ambushes or. Well, no, not like that. I mean, I mean, obviously, this is what we're thinking way too much into this right now. But yeah, like, that's, that's the fun part. I like it when it's done like that without getting like too, you know, upset about it. You know, yeah, like like going into like a, this is so wrong. This is like horrible. This ruined the whole movie because the trash was picked up. Exactly. You know, or, yes, to kind of more like, hey, that's kind of funny. You're like, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting concept to think about, but it, it's it's weird because like we never. I mean, like you were saying that there are areas where there is some sort of lack of government and yes, the trash is everywhere. But the question is also, is it also a metropolis like Gotham? It's usually probably these like outlying villages or something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could see if I could find it again. I'm sure if I just search uh, some keywords, I could find the article. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there's even like something like um, uh, a lot of the cities that that ISIS took over. I mean, they still functioned. Yeah, I mean, I guess if it's not broke, they'll allow it to happen, so to speak. Yeah, but that's why I'm assuming that that might be the same kind of thing that Bane did. You know, everything stays in place. Everyone still goes to their jobs. Everyone still does their thing. Kind of. I mean, obviously, I, if I, I as a, as a, as an illustrator, I'm not gonna. If, if someone takes over the city, I'm not gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna go do my work and draw pictures for BMW. It's like, no, come on, no one's gonna do that. I'm not doing that. Ah, well, but but you know, yeah, you know, yeah, anyway. it's a, man, that's so, twenty minutes. We talked enough and, about this one panel. Yeah, like one, yeah, like one page through or something here. All right. Well, this is going to be a two-hour podcast. So, well, let's see if we. I mean, it goes kind of quickly later with just the fights and stuff, but. 
But yes, something uh, actually re relevant to the story in mind. Now, I know Kosol is crazy, or, well, not crazy, but, you know, he, he is a narcissistic, uh, selfish, you know, yeah. Piece of shit. I mean, we've known that since he was first revealed in Harbinger Wars. But I'm just kind of sometimes, like, I'm not, like, against, like, you know, we have this evil group of old white men that are going to create this sort of, well, it's not really a false flag since the danger is actually there, but, you know, creating this whole scenario. Well, it is kind of a false. Well, yeah, I mean, there is a term for this. Oh, is there? Okay. There, there is a term for this where you you create the problem and then you solve it. Okay, yeah, because a false flag for me implies that it wasn't actually a problem or there was fate. No, it's when you when you a false flag is when you are dressed up like like in the in the easiest terms is when you put on the uniform of someone else and then shoot your own people oh, oh, to make it look like you've been oh. attacked. Oh, I never thought of it specifically like a nation flag. I thought it was more like a... No, that, that's where it came from, because it was basically you're getting... I mean, that, that's like the whole thing, like, yeah, you say, let's take one of the conspiracy theories about 9-11. That's also a false flag, because the idea is that the terrorists who took, um, who took those planes and crashed them into the World Trade Center were people paid by the CIA or by the government of the US or whatever, so that then they could be like, hey, look, these Arab people, these Muslims are attacking us. We need to go attack them, you know, get our whatever back. Because there's obviously no um, reason to hate the US otherwise. Right. So, no, no, but that's the... So that, that's, that's basically what a false flag operation is. Oh, right. But yeah, in this case, there is actually, I mean, yeah, and then it gets tricky because again, it gets, gets there's no, in this case, there's no real world equivalent I can think of. I mean, sure, there are cases of, you know, releasing, like, a plague and stuff like that, you know, like, biological warfare, but mm -hmm. not in the sense of, you know, creating these soldiers. I, it, it, yeah, anyways. Yeah, I can't find, a, find the term right now. I'm kind of looking online, but I can't find the term that I was looking for. I know that there is, like, some sort of military term for... I mean, like, like isn't that the whole thing, like, what, they're, what they did with mouthwash? Oh, I don't know. What's the, what about mouthwash? Um, oh, that no one cared, and then someone made people care. Yeah, basically the calling. What was it called? Um, uh, what, what's it called when when you have bad breath? Like, what's the, the quote unquote medical term? Not gingivitis, but oh, like. Oh yeah, I, I don't know, but I know what you're referring to. I don't know the term. So, but either way, halitosis. Oh, that's halitosis. So halitosis was basically a thing that was made up by i think listerine so they basically advertised with this whole thing like you know they started the advertising i don't know sometime into like whenever they started becoming big you know 70s 80s whenever that was um and they were like do you suffer from halitosis and blah 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 so use the mouthwash halitosis was not a thing like i mean obviously there's a thing like bad breath but they kind of like made this whole thing so they kind of they created this quote-unquote problem that then you could solve by buying their product mm -hmm. And I know that there is some sort of military term for it, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, but I've heard similar um, things, remember, too. It's it. actually on Cracked as well. There was an article uh, about, like, examples like that. Another one was, like, deodorant. In the yeah. sense of, like, yeah, I mean, we for thousands of years, we've sweated, and no one's really cared, because we all do it. And then yeah. so someone came up with a solution to a problem no one saw as a problem, and then made people feel very self-conscious. Right. But then again, I mean, there are some people that need deodorant. <laughs> but then, no, but actually, no, no, sorry. It's not people that need deodorant. It's people that need to clean themselves. Yeah, no, that deodorant I mean, is just like the sherry on top. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, like sweat or pers perspiration is actually odorless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I know. So it's... Yeah, it's, it's the actual, like, dirt and stuff like that on your skin that makes the smell. So if you clean yourself, you don't need deodorant. I mean, every time like people are like, I never, I don't, I don't ever wear deodorant. I've never done that. Um, I sometimes wear antiperspirant if I know that I'm going to be like in a, like a, if I have to wear like a blue dress up shirt or something like that. And I know I might be sweating. Then I maybe put on some antiperspirant or something like that. But yeah. Anyway, now we're th almost 30 minutes into the episode yes. and we're still not even any further. Yes. No, but my main. Maybe point we should just was, do a normal talk podcast where we just be like, like take all the clips of like a hardcast that 
is irrelevant and just like cut it into a different podcast. And then the hardcast episodes would be like 10 minutes long. And then we could have the other podcast that probably be like much more popular. Well, if people care what we thought about things. Right, you're right. No one does. Yeah, no, All right. no, but my main thing was just um, even like going through like the fact that these guys are, you know, immoral, uh, selfish, you know, business people and stuff. Mm. I'm still kind of obviously, I don't know. I just feel kind of like with all the leaks from the Harada leaks and stuff, mm -hmm. I get the feeling that Bloodshot should be mentioned there somewhere. And we kind of have like, you know, information on Bloodshot in general. Like if not, then like um, Unity and Gate would have it. Yeah. So I kind of feel it's a bit odd to have this virus that makes people look like Bloodshot. And then having PRS come in and uh, like solve it. Why? That seems fine. I mean, because they already know that this bloodshot person is a threat i mean bloodshot is not yeah uh, but it's like their a creation, good guy or would they be able to spin it enough that they had nothing to do with it i mean i'm not well of course of course i mean yeah maybe maybe they have something with it. i mean but they could also be just like yeah it's bloodshot started infecting people yeah he's a menace we I need suppose. to hunt him down and look we have this weapon that can totally do it i suppose but still i don't mm. know it's well, and to, but before we like move on to the next one, because we kind of do need to, because I, because we are, this is going to become a two hour podcast. Um, on page 17, that is a really, I don't know if you, if, if this was like intentional or not, but the shading on the face and the third panel of the two guys, like Kozal and whatever the other mm. guy is, holy shit, they look like skulls. I could be intentional, but. I mean, I mean, there's so much shad shade, like shadow or whatever you call it, coming from like the. the oh, okay. When I zoom in a little bit, it doesn't look that much. I mean, it's more like this kind of graphite feel to it, but it looks so shady, like shadowy, that it looks like a skull. Like they, they literally like superimpose a skull on their face sometimes. I think it might just be like um, again that the artist maybe went a little overboard there to kind of give an impression of like you know depth. Of like the yeah you know like what's called the eye socket so to speak and also the 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 chin bone it looks they, they look they look like they're um you know malnourished mm, yeah no it's one of those things and, where it's and, like a little too extreme and that makes yeah especially in comparison to like uh well i mean really the only other person we can see their face properly there is like festival and that soldier to the right mm. i think it's probably just like uh yeah. Well, it always okay. feels to mean saying like it's oh it's probably just a rush job, you know, like against the artist. But again, it's not the most important panel. Got it done, mm. and it works. And again, you could, as you said, maybe it looks better in printed. I just, I mean, in digital, it just looks very like. Again, I'm I'm looking at this at what forty percent or something like that, and it does. Yeah, it's. Yeah. That's also something I didn't mention that magic and festival are in. PRS and they're they're escaping. Yay, gal pals. Yay, magic. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Oh yeah, and also um, Livewire also turns into a bloodshot in this. Yeah, I was one. kind of curious about that when I saw in the summary page that like she was gonna appear. I was kind of like, ooh, yes, perfect. You know, she's someone who's relevant to this. Hmm. And I was kind of curious then, like, if I like this or not. Because it's always tricky when you have characters who have a power set that kind of, you know, should work in a scenario. Yeah. I mean, I think they did it right in this because they said, like, it's overpowering her. Yeah, because it's overwhelmed. Just, like, and considering the amount... Yeah, it's overwhelming because there's so many of this. Exactly. Scenario. And considering the amount, I feel that, sure, I mean, she is powerful in terms of uh, this uh, tech, uh, technopath, I think uh, they call it. Mm-hmm. It still kind of feels like, yeah, this works in the sense of just, as you said, overwhelmed. And once, you know, any of it can come through, you know, it probably would start taking over. But it is one of those things where you always get a bit like, wait a minute, shouldn't that character's mm. power prevent that from happening? Or, like, I remember there was this one uh, arc in, uh, like, a Wolverine comic. So where I guess the writer just hadn't read enough of, like, X-Men or something. 
but they basically had this idea that adamantium in of itself is poisonous to the body. And the reason it's never mattered with Wolverine is because he has healing factor. Right. But then I believe that the whole thing was that he lost his healing factor and it was like a, you know, like a ticking clock thing going on. Wait, wasn't that like a storyline? And no, it, oh god, yeah, of course that was that was Iron Man. And which one? Well, Iron Man the movie, even with the where he he was poisoning himself with, or he was getting poisoned by the right because of the material, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then he had to make up his own uh, element or something. Element, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that just reminded me because I was like, didn't I see something about someone having something in his body that was poisoning him slowly? I was like, oh, yeah. Because I could just have this image of someone, you know, putting some sort of antidote into his arm or whatever. But, yeah. but the whole thing there yeah. though, was that a lot of fans hated that arc because, again, you know, fans have read most of the stuff. And mm -hmm. they point out all of these other, what's called, characters who have adamantium in their bodies. Because, of course, they've made, like, you know, spin-offs and done more things with it. X2. Mm, exactly, and other characters oh, who I don't think have healing factor. Mm. And again, it's one of those things where I do like the concept because it's kind of an interesting twist. But it's the hard part when you come in late to the party. Yeah. Because a lot of... I mean, you can't, you can't be expected to go through everything. And, yeah. Mm, but then at the same time, there's ways to, you know, there's compromises in the sense of... Uh, like, all you have to do is come up with one other element to add in that's going to complicate it mm. for future writers. You know, it's like, no, no, it's not that adamantium is poisonous to the body, but when afflicted with this thing, too. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, it did work out well, I feel, with Livewire. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, it's not her story. You know, she's just relevant mm. because, you know, she's sort of like the leader of Unity. So, you know, of course, she's going to be present. And in a way, I mean, we're going to see that with the next issue here, but it's a great final page of the issue, you know, with Ninjak being taken over. Yeah. It's just one of those, and that's the thing what I do love about Bloodshot as a concept, which I don't know if it will be more in the future. But it's one of those easy things where you can have like a fun thing with a character with, you know, nanites. Again, not, not having it be, like, common and, or permanent, unless, you know, there's a really good reason for it. But just be something kind of fun to happen. It's, it's kind of like, you know, like the symbiote in Marvel. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like it's been on too many characters, but still kind of fun when, like, oh, that character has the symbiote now? And then, like, how is that different? And, like, how does that work with their already pre-existing powers or... Right, right, yeah. And I feel that's kind of a cool thing that I'd love to see more of with Bloodshot and the Nanites. Especially now when there is sort of this amount of them out there somewhere. I mean, even if... Well, you know, kind of moving ahead here, but even then with them all collected. Hmm. I'm sure, you know, it'll be something of like, oh, well, they're somewhere or they can be replicated or... Yeah, of course. I mean, this is a very easy way to make the whole, like, let's you and him fight thing come exactly. alive. Like, yeah. you just get get some hero infected by with the uh, with the nanites, and then, you know, anyone can fight anyone. Or I could even consider something like, um, let's go, like, maybe Ninjak being inspired by this and having sort of like a fail-safe, uh, like, boost attack or something. Mm. Like, maybe he has some kind of, like, temporary ones that, you know, he'll... Ooh, an EMP. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, would that work? I mean, technically, I, yeah, wouldn't, shouldn't Ginger have an EMP on her? I don't know. I mean, it might affect her, I, th I thought she uh... used something like that. I, th I, th I thought I, I thought I remember something like that having happened in Valiant so far already, like, that someone shot off an EMP or something. Mm. <sighs> it doesn't I matter. I remember myself. Probably. I mean, it is a sort of a typical thing. All right. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the usual kind of good start of a story, setting it up, and exciting. Issue two. After Ninja got infected, Bloodshot managed to uh, absorb his nanites, curing him and showing the others that it was possible. Borrowing a car, the squad drives off to the middle of the outbreak, only to be attacked by Deathmate. They fight, but Bloodshot manages to do his reabsorption trick while the rest flee. 
Only this time, it seems he and Kay McHenry are now back during the Valiant Times. Meanwhile, Festival and Magic have escaped, and Festival has Kosol at gunpoint. Oh no, I can't believe last issue Bloodshot died. When? No, I mean, you know, he gets his head cut off by Ninjak and, you know, he has to reattach it. Which is also interesting, though. I mean, I have two things to say about this comic, and this is the only two things I have to say about this. One, so could you technically kill Bloodshot by just not having his head anywhere close to the body? Hmm. Because, I mean, unless the nanites would, like, grow far enough so that it could, like, reattach his head, because it looked like they were saying, like, you know, the head, give him back his goddamn noggin. You know, like, it kind of looked like he was dead until they put the head back on its socket. I suppose. So is there an actual thing where you can you can maybe take off the head and just remove the head, put the head in a box that the nanites can't get to, and then Bloodshot's dead? I suppose that would be a possibility. But I guess it's... I guess it is the problem, though, with any kind of healing factor character. Like, at what point do you clone yourself, in a way? Well, it's like the that ship. Ship? Yeah, there's like a, a thought exercise. Oh, yeah, yeah, called. the Ephesian... Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, you rebuild it, like, you replace it. At what point is it not the ship anymore? Yeah, if you keep replacing a, a ship by... Yeah, Theseus' ship, I think. Is that what yeah, it is? something like that. Yeah, the ship of Theseus, yeah. Yeah, it's like if you keep fixing a thing and replacing single parts of a ship, and then at one point you've replaced the entire ship, is it still the same ship? True. Yeah. But here's more, uh, I'm thinking more like in the fact like, um, well, two examples I can think of. You have like a cell from Dragon Ball Z, mm -hmm. who like after Goku seemingly destroyed him, he actually had one cell left. And because of Gohan. his like, because of his Namekian regeneration uh, genes, he yeah. could... isn't it? Wasn't it Gohan? Gohan? No, it was Goku who killed him first. But then, oh well, no, no, it was him. He killed himself. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He killed himself, thinking he killed the cell, but there was one cell left. No, 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 no. Here we go. Here, okay. No, sorry. Cell killed himself because he blew himself up. Right, and he teleported him. That he was, was he, was, he right. was fighting. He was fighting with Gohan, so technically Gohan beat him, and then he blew himself up so he would uh, blow up the entire world. But then, yeah, Goku, uh, Goku teleported him to Kai's he teleported planet. to the to Kai's planet. Yeah, and then that's where he blew up, and then he regenerated and himself from that one cell and teleported back. Yes, right. That was it. Right. I totally forgot that was like he, you know, he inflated and stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, like, that's the kind of thing there where there's one cell remaining. But at least there, there's one cell. So it's like, okay, well, there's only one cell to start growing. But if you were to be detached, that's kind of like the thing there. So how do you know which is the dominant portion of the body to grow? Well, I would say that it is technically the head. Because... Um... That that's kind of like the thing. What I really liked about this one episode of, um, I think, film theory. I guess it was this thing about like with the regeneration people, like um, uh, Wolverine and and Deadpool and stuff like that. That even if you if you destroy the brain, like if you if you shoot a bullet into a brain, you can you, you will lose memories and who you are as a person. Because even if they, if the brain cells or the brain waves or whatever the whole like mm. neuron system reconnects and regenerates, the signals have been lost. Right. Yeah, because that, that. that's that's all that the brain is. It's just a bunch of signal, signals. So if the signals get interrupted and destroyed, there's no way of getting those signals back. So you'd basically be like a vegetable eventually, depending on how. Well, no, not a vegetable specifically. I mean, you can like get normal motor function stuff going like that, but memories and who you are as a person, like who, you, how you've like been brought up, and like your whole like nurture oh, language too. I just yeah, and language as well. I mean, there, there's that whole story about that um, that guy who got a railroad spike up his brain. You know that story? Yeah, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, he gets this railroad spike up his brain. It's like an accident when he was like working out or whatever on a railroad, and um, he became a different person. Like he was alive, but he was a totally different person. Like his friends did not recognize him anymore. Like as a 
as a person. Like obviously they recognize his face and stuff. Like that. So what I'm thinking is that in this situation where the head is off, I feel like the nanites would build it from the head down because if the head is the one that disintegrates, then bloodshot is no longer bloodshot. Mm, that's definitely true. Though I think they have uh, they haven't considered like that the film theory thing though. Since I'm pretty sure like in the very first issue, like when it just came out, that he's been shot. In yeah, the head like there's that one page I remember. I would love the cuts of just his whole body being like demolished, and it was like half. But it is also head, interesting. Like, yeah, but it is interesting that like a lot of these regeneration people have memory loss. That's true. So I guess... Like, even, even Bloodshot has memory loss. So maybe that is a thing. Like, yeah, he's been shot in the head enough that, you know, he's just lost a lot of memories. Well, that could be kind of nice. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of the story with uh, with um, Wolverine. The, the adamantium bullet, or what yeah. was it? Was it adamantium bullet? Yeah, because that's the only shot thing. Shot him through the head. Yeah. All right, and the second thing I need to talk about this, because we're already looking in close to an hour. Um... I can't believe that it, it took three pages of Ninjak fighting them for them to solve it. What a fucking cop out. Oh, you, you like, should have been long? Yes, of course it should have been longer. Ninjak should have been the, the thing fighting them for the next three issues. Mm. This is this is the cool thing. Like you're like, holy shit! The 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 like Batman of the Valiant Universe, the guy who has a method or a way to kill every single character in the in the Valiant Universe has gone bad. Oh my god! Let's totally milk this for what it's worth. Mm, yeah, no, but you're right. Three pages later. Oh, I'm gonna suck out the blood. Blah, 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 done. No, but you're right. It should have been something with, um, like maybe they managed to subdue him or like chase him off or something. Like, yes, like, you know, they have, like, a temporary victory slash stalemate. Yeah. And then he kind of comes back at the climax, and that's when they figured out how to solve it, or... But even the climax, it's not even... The, the, I mean, spoilers for the re for the end of the, the this thing. Um, but even the climax is a total deus ex machina. Oh. Like, and it's so... Uh, so sad. Like, like, it's so, like... <sighs> It does not feel good, the ending, and and we'll get to it later. And 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 the thing is, like, even if even if Ninjak was, I guess I guess I'd be even more disappointed if that's how they brought Ninjak back, the same way they brought everyone else in New York oh. back, because then it would be even more of a cop out of like, oh, this is a super powerful guy. Oh wait, the the god, the machine god of machine, machine god, whatever came and and solved everything. And it's just like. Uh, it's just it's just frustrating because it was like it's a good idea and I would love to have like this being like a more issue because because the way that it ends in the issue in the first issue is like oh shit here comes Ninjak as a as dead a Deadpool Deadpool uh, as Bloodshot and it's just like it, you're like oh fuck what's gonna happen the next issue this is gonna be so amazing three pages later oh wait he's back. And he never becomes it again. I mean, he could have become it again. Like, ah, it's just... Well, again, I'm a, kind of, <sighs> a, a big part of me hopes that there are seeds from this event. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, this is not like... A, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, tell my fanfics. Although you want to. No, but I'm just kind of like... Because I love when... Especially if it's not, like, immediate. Like, I love it when when like a result from an event happens a bit later because it can like oh because i love that feeling but it, i don't know i'm kind of liking the idea of a sort of a non-nanite bloodshot coming from this like someone who was infected before and sort of becomes this um like this villain who's kind of like trying to get more nanites to him for himself like getting it back and yet sort of being like this more um, more of a street level villain who's just doing everything he can to try to get a hold of more of nanites. <laughs> like a cell. Like cell from Dragon Ball. Oh at the beginning of, yeah. stages. But without like powers, like, like it's more of a um, Yeah. Like No no no, but like he he sucks off all these people at the beginning. So yeah, yeah. But again, like the better all gone. Around to get more so powerful. it's more of a um, I don't know. It's, it's like I said. It's not. It's, it's, it's kind of half baked. It's not like it would be kind of like a nice little. Um, was it you know those? What was that thing called? 
where it was like the Gotham City thing where it was like with the two police officers. I don't know what. I mean, the comic. Oh, it's like something, got... Yeah, yeah, in the comic, what was Gotham it called? Central. Yeah, maybe where it was just like more like not about Batman. It was more. Yeah, about... it was it's the police procedural yeah. in Gotham, but you know, with right. Batman in the background. Like I read yeah, the first so... issue where, where the two two police officers think it's just like sort of like a normal, like house call in a sense, and uh, Mister mm. Freeze is inside and kills one of them. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, I think that would be kind of cool to have as well. Just like a one guy from this, like some some loser guy who has no thing, like no place in the world. He's just like working, like I don't know, a McDonald's job or something like that. And he gets these powers, like this bloodshot powers. And he loves it so much. And they were taken away from him. And he was like, no, I could have been something with that. I could have, I was strong. I was fast. I was all that kind of stuff. And then he becomes obsessed with finding these nanites. And there's like a little bit of like a calling. Like he feels them kind of pulling him towards him. Like, and then he finds like these nanites. I think that would be kind of cool to just kind of go like with this guy. Well, yeah, sort of like getting uh, these nanites. Sort of like a weaker, but more like driven bloodshot in a sense. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, but it's just like, like I, I think he'd be a cool villain for other characters, so to speak. Like not necessarily a nemesis yeah. for Bloodshot. This would be like the Netflix adaption of like <laughs> something. Yes. You know, something small. Ah well, either way, it just again, I just hope more things come from this. I mean, might very well be. You know, I'm behind on all the comics, so. All right, we have two more issues and ten minutes to do it in. <laughs> So, yeah, yes, the first thing is uh, uh, I had a good chocolate then in the car. Yes, me too. That was actually great. And the other thing about that, where is Quiet Man? He's up on top. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's in the trunk. Mm. He's in the trunk. Mm, poor guy. Is that family supposed to be someone? I don't know. Like... I mean, it looks... I mean, at first thought, I kind of looked... She kind of looked like Marge with the hair going up. I mean, I could have been but kind of I fun can't... if it was like, you know, human or like, you know, real life versions of them. Yes, that's a joke. Yeah. Because I've seen that a lot in comics where... Yeah. Oh, like um, like in the Amanda Connor um, Power, Power Girl comic uh, that I have, they have this great scene where she's in, where Power Girl asks her in her civilian outfit is in the movie theater and she gets hit on by Howard from Big Bang Theory. Oh, cool. It's, it's nice because it's subtle. It's not like it's a, hey, look, it's Howard. It's like, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> Again, it's just a quick thing. But it's just like, hey, it's Howard and the rest of the gang. All right. Well, what else we got in this issue? Not really much. I mean, they go into New York. They fight. Yeah. And the military uh, makes it worse, as always. Magic and uh, festival escape. Yeah, and then, and then that's 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 that. Yes. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor. Need to travel to a horrific man-made viral outbreak in order to stop it with your buddies? Want to do it in style? The new Hyundai family vehicle can fit six grown men <laughs> and one smart dog comfortably with a large trip ahead. <laughs> But when you travel with family, you travel in comfort. But you're not. Issue three. Bloodshot and Kay are back where she died. They run from Deathmate, who's shooting at them. They escape into the woods and keep getting younger until they're children. They arrive at a fairy tale castle and meets Bloodsquirt, who will only let them in with a riddle. The riddle being, who is Deathmate? They're interrupted by Deathmaid, and they run for cover inside the castle, pushing Squirt out of the way. They find the bodies of their older selves and talk about how, how Kay is Deathmaid, and that Ray won't leave her when they're back in their bodies. He promises. They get back into their bodies in the real world. Kay is more Kay than Deathmaid now, and they kiss. Just in time for Bloodshot's newer flame to catch them in the act. Awkward! I mean, it's just so too, like, like I, when I was, when I got to that page, cause it's like a full page mm. spread and I kind of turned the page. I was just like, ah, oh, really? 
Like, I was just like... Very contrived. Yeah, it was just like, what are the chances? <laughs> you know, like, I understand that it's like a plot device shit or whatever, but still, it's just like, uh, I just felt so... I mean, I, I don't want to say that we use the word unrealistic, you know, looking at all the stuff yeah, that's in this. Yeah, no, but it's just very forced, very contrived. Yes, I mean, it's just like, this feels like out of a soap, you know, like like where... You know, like like where there's a thing where someone holds the person's hand for whatever reason, someone walks in and sees them, and they she's like, oh, "I knew it," and it's just like, "It's just come on, you're better than this," you know. I mean, I mean, was this really just a way to like have an ending that would be then like, "Oh, buy the next issue," because I don't think this is strong enough. I don't, I don't feel like the the audience of Bloodshot USA is going to be all into the 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 relationship drama that doesn't really matter in this comic. I mean... Well, as we will see in the next issue, you know... I, I, I do... I mean, we'll mention it then, but I do like how it's sort of handled. Yeah, but it's solved so quickly. Yeah, but that's kind of what I like about it. In, like, in comparison to the Ninja thing, this I kind of appreciate because everyone on board knows there's more important things to do. Yes, I know that there's more important things to do, but it also kind of, like... My problem is just I do not want to be screwed with as a reader. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause I just don't like the idea of like the. And I've, I've talked about this on the podcast before. I mean, it's the typical thing. The 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 cut like the the last thing right before commercial break. The I'm pregnant. And then after the commercial, it's just like, "What well, did you take a test? No." And it's just like, "Don't do that." Mm. It's just it's just annoying. And this is the same thing with the ninjack thing as well. It's like. Oh my God! Ninjak is death is is a is a bloodshot now. What's gonna happen? And it's just like, nope, it's solved. And the same thing here is like, like, oh my God! There's drama now. She, the, this this girl that he's not really seen for a long time because he's been other places and away from her. We haven't really seen their relationship for at least two issues or so, or like two volumes even, right? I mean, like the whole volume with volume three, they weren't even anywhere close to each other, and. I personally have like no feelings about this relationship. Like I, I totally forgot that they were even like in a relationship. I thought they were just like traveling buddies, you know? And then, and then even with the whole thing with, with Kay, it's just like, okay, I guess like, it, cause it just, it just feels so contrived. and so like unnecessary to put this in there. Because we know that it's not going to, like, do anything. Like, uh, I mean, I don't, I mean, the thing is, like, there's no good way of doing this. Because either you solve it quickly, and then I'm disappointed that, that you that you use this, like, device to, to get me to buy the next issue. Mm. Or I'm annoyed because there's so much more important stuff going on. I don't want to be talking about a relationship. And I feel like generally these comics are not a, a lot about romantic relationships. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I mean, superhero closest, comics aren't that like sort this. Of works, I guess, would be like Doctor Mirage. Yeah, but that's also not like it's not about the relationship. Oh, I'd say in a form, right? I mean, the first volume was all about her trying to get back her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that's the thing: it's about her getting back her husband. It's not about them dating, them like going through hardships together as a couple. I mean, this isn't like a romance comic. Oh, like yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. So, so, so the the driving point of Doctor Mirage is the whole ghost world, the whole medium thing, the whole like yeah, you have a dead husband that you're trying to to find his soul. That's the the driving force of that. That there's a relationship in there. That's not a problem. That's fine. That's great. But the thing is, like, the idea of, like, these kind of things where you have, like, people dating. I mean, I feel like in superhero comics, it's usually one of these things where it's, like, there's some tension maybe between two characters and then maybe the fans want them. But then but then it's usually just, like, culminates in, like, a kiss. You know, like, like there isn't much relationship building in that sense unless it's, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know. Not if Joe Casada has anything to say about it. I don't understand that reference. No, it was the editor who uh, who greenlighted uh, One More Day from Spider-Man. You know, when he sells his marriage to the devil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I heard he about that, yeah. himself said he didn't like him being married to uh, Mary Jane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is just like, yeah, I know. I, I'm so glad I'm editor-in-chief so I can make this decision. Yeah. 
but it's just one of those things where I feel like this has no place here. And I really think that there was just, they just couldn't think of a different, like, like a, like a, a different way of giving you a nice to be continued. Mm. Especially seeing what happens in the next issue of just the way that it's just the whole thing is just like, oh, it's not what it looks like. And then it's just like, okay. And, and that's, that's all it is. Again, in like two issues, it's resolved. And then again, it mentions it at the end. But it's also just like a, you know, I'm only here for you, baby. I know. Kiss, kiss, kiss. That's it. I guess we should count ourselves lucky that the whole outbreak wasn't solved in the first issue. Yeah. And then the rest was just this relationship. Like the fighting. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I... Maybe maybe some of the readers care about this stuff. I don't know. I mean, I know you're not like you're the furthest thing from like wanting relationshipy romantic love stuff in a movie or in a comic book. So uh, I, I assume that you don't like this either. And stuff, but, um... Hey, you're the one who said that you hate every single romantic uh, Disney song yes, because you're song. just like, oh, get yeah. back to the fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, you, you stop the story. No, you don't. A Whole New World was about Aladdin having sex with Jasmine and showing her a whole new world. So, yeah, we didn't get to see it. Well, no, because that's for kids. Exactly. It's oh. about, it's about, it's about, it's about, it's about um, the, in between the lines, Humphrey. Yep, that's what the whole Sphinx losing its nose is around. No, no, it's the fireworks at the end, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'm so disappointed that they didn't have an Easter egg yet. Of Aladdin and Jasmine in the background of Mulan. Yes, that would be hilarious. You know, but they do that so many things otherwise. You know, just one shot. Mm. I mean, it wouldn't be a perfect, you know, like fit fit since you know they don't have the they have the like the environment there. Yeah. Just like at the end, you know, when the, you know, and you when see the fireworks the are going off. Yeah. Yeah, or something like that, and then you, just having them like the silhouettes of them far in the background. <laughs> Just two people sitting on a on a like what a pagoda. Yeah, but kind of getting like, like the sultan hat. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh yeah. my god, it's them. Yeah. Anyways. So Disney Plus, Humphrey. Oh yeah, damn. Oh, I can't wait. I, I got a bit disappointed when I heard some of the specifics. Oh yeah, what are the specifics? Uh, the Vault. What's that? Well, they're not gonna have all the Disney movies out at the same time. I. Time fucking knew it ah oh, god they're gonna it. have it I, I don't think they're ever gonna you know permanently have something not be gone except song in the south i guess <laughs> so which is too bad i've always yes. wanted to see it but uh what's called um but the whole um thing is like oh yeah no we're gonna have like this rotating roster and yeah you know, I, don't just I don't understand why but i don't understand why but I guess, I mean... argument I've heard, which is similar to apparently why Netflix always uh, wants to have at least two seasons of a show, is apparently to stop people from doing the trials. Or at least to not just have the trials. Right. So if you use right, one trial right. once because you just wanted to binge watch, you know, all of the Disney movies. Right. But now it's like, crap, you know, I can only binge watch a quarter of them or however many yeah it depends i mean it depends on i guess then they would be probably like on a monthly rotation then mm. um if people get like their things per month yeah it sucks i mean because i mean obviously then it would kind of suck if you're like oh man i'm really in the mood to watch like pocahontas and then you go on it's like oh shit it's not a pocahontas month exactly or however it's going to be sad yeah. but i'm still interested i mean a lot of the original programming that's come out like the 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 winter soldier and falcon miniseries and the um the Loki series. Yeah, no, it's I mean, that's curious. amazing. And with the original actors and everything, it's like, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm curious too. But I mm. think they're kind of shooting, well, not shooting themselves in the foot, but kind of a missed, um, no, no, I think they're limiting themselves by calling it Disney Plus. Because mm. the problem is Disney itself has this, you know, brand name. Like, I'd, I'd, like people don't care if Disney owns something. But the moment Disney is front and center, you have expectations. Yeah. yeah. And sure, you know, Disney has quote unquote matured, you know, over the years. You know, it's not just the family friendly thing. Mm. But still, mostly, like, I'm going to have trouble seeing, like, a R rated, you know, like, movie promoted on Disney Plus. You know, like, 
Yeah. So a killer who has been murdering and raping all these children. Now on Disney Plus. <laughs> and then of course you have to have the that song. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Netflix no, has done really good with being able to brand itself for everyone. Yeah. Like I and especially because they have that nice little kids tab that you also have, which I'm assuming this girl's going to be on uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Like it yeah. kind of feels with Netflix. I don't hear anyone really complain that. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm glad they have all those kids shows, but oof, you know, they have like what's called Orange Is the New Black, and uh, you know, all these other like mature shows, and it's kind of like. With Disney, it feels a lot more like, yeah, I bought it for my children, but then they have this, you know, really violent show. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it'll probably do well enough. I mean, it's Disney. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to get it as soon. Like, I'm going to do the trial month, of course. Honestly, the first what I look forward is. to is if they can have, like, the whole Disney afternoon. Hmm. Because, I don't know, it'd be fun well, to watch thing, I mean, again, you can, you can, you Again, you can cut all of this out if, <laughs> if you feel we'll like see. it. We'll see. I mean, um, we just talked so many things. Yeah, and uh, I don't oh, know God, if the listeners hour. actually like that. Yeah, yeah, we're not finished yet. Um, we'll finish up soon. Did you know that that Netflix show Next Gen? Have you seen that? No, uh, it's a movie though. Yeah, it's a movie, and I've been kind of interested in it because it kind of looks kind of like Big Hero Six. But yeah, that's what I like, heard. Kind of like, like a ripoff. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that it's completely made in Blender? I did not. Holy shit! I did not know this, and I saw it like today. I was watching uh, the Captain Solution? whatever it's. A disillusion. Yeah, he he was. He's a guy who uses a lot of Blender, and he was at a Blender conference, and he was talking about how he uses Blender. And it's a really good thing. It's forty five minutes long. Um, put it on one and a half times speed. If you're at all interested in three D like Blender stuff, Blender is amazing. It's gotten so much better, and it's like probably one of my favorite things that exists for people. <laughs> um, no, but you know what I mean. Like, I would say it's food, like it's like sure. no, 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 no. But like as like yeah, a yeah. product of yeah, because I mean like you can literally do anything with this and it's completely free you know like do, do you have to pay like 130 dollars a month to have a subscription to maya no just do everything you can do in maya in blender but anyway but to see that this this like this whole movie was made in blender is amazing and i'm really looking now i'm even more looking forward to actually sitting down and watching it all right nice i'll check it out too i mean it's, it seems fine it's just yeah i have trouble sitting down and watching movies by myself Funny yeah. enough times you're watching shows. All by myself. Yeah. But last thing before the next issue, uh, page yes. 97. K, I don't feel so good. <laughs> uh, for those who don't, you know, don't have the comic app, it's a page of uh, young uh, K and uh, Ray Bloodshot uh, disintegrating. So I made an Avengers Infinity War reference. Yes, you're very original, Humphrey. <laughs> Issue 4. After some relationship awkwardness with magic, Bloodshot and Kay fly off to help with the outbreak. Literally one page. <laughs> Quiet Man dies due to absorbing too many nanites, something the others can't even do due to them being too outdated. PRS tries to get Kay back under their control, but only managed to have her arrive at her HQ and kill Kosol herself. After speaking to her inner child, she figures out what the solution is, and she manages to reabsorb all the nanites with no harm to herself. The horror is over, but Bloodshot manages to track down magic and proves to her that she's really the only gal for him. <laughs> the beginning of that, that explanation sounds so bored. <laughs> Like, like you were reading it, just like oh, okay, here we go. Uh, she's trying to do this, and then yeah, but um, yeah, it was uh, again, I, it's hard to say that it's a Deus Ex Machina because we know who this was, and it's not like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, this was would have happened, assuming that there was a bad end version of this. Yeah, you know, this would have been the solution. It would just have this, you know, awful implication of. You know, oh wait, the villains won. Yeah. So you know, ironically, in a way, the end is the same. You could say. Yeah, technically. Yeah. You know, it's just... In fact, they would have saved more people if they did like Kozel said and let him do it. Yeah. True. <laughs> Thanks a lot, uh, K. PRS did nothing wrong. Yeah, no, but it's one of those. 
But for me, the big thing with this, though, is, all right, a new superhero. Yeah, and I like it. I like her. Uh, did you even, like, sorry, but, like, uh, until we read, I, until I read the number zero that comes after this, I did not realize that Kate was still alive. Ah, there she is. Um, sorry, I just did, guess I didn't. I missed her. Um, oh, you like? Oh, yeah. No, that would have been that would have been typical to have her like you know sacrifice herself. Sacrifice herself. Yeah. I mean, she goes up into this into space and explodes. That's true. I thought so too at first. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, okay. And then it, it literally like with the monologue then coming with like seeing Kay do what she did was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Which is something you say when someone sacrifices themselves. And then the, there was no mention of her. And then I guess you kind of see her like bringing back, um, bringing back Bloodshot mm. in the second panel on the page after she blows up. And I was kind of thinking like, oh, that might have been just a flashback to when she went up with him, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it was just like weird because you couldn't really see if she was coming down or up. And then I didn't see her in the panel after that when they were kind of walking into um, the the hangar. So I kind of just assumed that she had killed herself. Um, it, I think it could have been a little bit more clear that she did not. I agree. Like, I think I think for something. me, it's you know because of the last issue that I kind of knew it. Yeah. Again, what, what do you mean the last issue? Like the issue before this or the last yeah, issue? Issue zero. Volume? Yeah, because in issue zero you see her properly, and that's when I recognize it too. Mm. Because in all all subsequent panels where she ex she comes and she's very small and very insignificant in all of them, you kind of think that she would be more significant, seeing that she had just saved like millions of people. So, oh well, I mean, it's it's not her name yeah. on the cover. No, it's always the white man who gets the credit, and, and not just white man, like the palest white man. Yeah, like the whitest white man. And the black man's white. <laughs> I was drinking coffee, Humphrey. No, but it's, um... What's it called? Uh, it was kind of cool. I mean, I'm not sure how, considering, like, her sort of uh, on-and-off popularity. So I kind of see her a bit as, like, a Captain Marvel kind of character. Like, Marvels. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think sort of... Not that it's, not that it's the same costume at all. You know, because otherwise every form-fitting outfit is a rip-off. But sort of with the whole, you know, like the, not a star, but like the beam in the middle of the chest and sort of blonde yeah, hair, I think. Yeah, it does make her very... Yeah, it feels very sort of Captain yeah. Marvel-ish. And also, I guess, in terms of, not in terms of the power set of being nanites, but just like, oh yeah, they're sort of flying and... See, that's the problem with superheroes. There are so many shared powers that it's hard to call anything a ripoff or, yeah. you know, reference. Oh, look, they fly. Oh, like... So many. Yeah. I, it sucks that flight is flight is so cool and it's like so boring in comics. Yeah, well, because because I it's just such a convenience, you know. Exactly. I mean, could you imagine like like I mean again they kind of make fun of this with like Batman and a lot of like the Justice League stuff like what that one time when he's like falling mm. and he's just like can someone with flight please come help me? Exactly. Like, I can't I can't do anything but I just love how cool he is when he's falling to his death. He's just like can someone come please like. Soon ish. No, the baby needs some help. Yeah. <laughs> Don't carry me like that. But yeah, no, it's um but again I like and this is kind of how I feel um, a lot of events should be in a way. Like not that the only point of an event is to introduce a new character. But this felt like a nice material game, so to speak. Oh yeah. You know I like I like this character. Yeah, because you know, and also it's not like and if one were to like, you know, to have these like discussions there are these days about like, oh, we're putting in new characters. Here's like, oh no, but this, you know, this character has existed since, you know, volume two of Archer and Armstrong. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. And she has like a cool Technically. No, but and she has a cool like sort of arc to it too. I mean, it's always cool with characters, you know, beating death, so to speak. But it's also just like the whole setup there in terms of, oh yeah, you know, the Hey, I thought Valiant is where dead is dead. Hey. 
Yeah, but this She's was okay. Dead. This was okay because she was a geomancer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we're going to start with the excuses. Yes. Okay, okay. I'm sure, I'm sure that's how DC and Marvel also started. Where it's like, well, in it this is. one, he's it not is. actually dead. You know, he's just like, you know, he's technically in a different dimension, so he didn't really die. Exactly. No, but it's slippery that's slope, Humphrey. Slippery, slippery slope. Slippery slope. Slippery slope. Slippery slope. So, but again, I'm just kind of curious about what you know will come of her. Like, I don't know if she's done anything since. So, <laughs> no, no, man. Then again, I'm super far behind. I, know, I, know, I mean, there's I, a whole finished. I know, I know. You know, there's a whole new twelve issue Bloodshot series finished after this. Mm -hmm. So it's well. If you would like finally start editing the podcasts on time, maybe we could hurry up. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's hard. It's busy. Anyway. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's also uncomfortable working here because I don't have like a proper. Oh, okay, setup. okay. See, so I am hearing a lot of excuses. Yeah. I just, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, when are you going to get an apartment finally, man? Yeah, yeah, dude, I have been trying. Good lord, it's been yeah. hard. I'm so yeah. pissed off since Tell I got like it. one on the first day when I moved to Denmark again. Yeah. Went there, arrived one day, checked the apartment, took it. Yeah. And now it's been like. No one's answering back. And the ones who do are scams. Oh, no. Yeah, no, there's this weird scam where they... It was so funny because uh, a, a friend at work warned me about it. Like, and, and was very, very, like, on the word specific of what they would say. Okay. And then when I got the response back, it was exactly like she said with, like, the specifics different. Damn. It's about people... Like, I'm interested in seeing this place. Awesome. Now I'm not in the country right now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you send me this money, I can give you the. Yeah, no, you do it through Airbnb somehow, and that's yeah. a safe thing. And then you get to have the keys, so you can look at the place. Yeah. And then you know, if you don't like it, you can just you know reach you know, like cancel the payment or something. Yeah, some like oh god. Oh man! And I got so Crazy. pissed off because I was so excited, and then she warned me, and then I still got the response. I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess no one wants to live in you know. No, and plenty do. The ass just no, 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 no. no I'm just saying that, like in Denmark, no one wants to live on the ass of the world, which is Viborg. You know, and then everyone wants to live on the Canary Islands. Mm, true. Yeah. So. Well, it looks like you're going to be stuck in an Airbnb for a long time. That's what I'm worried, though. Like, at some point, it might might not be worth getting an apartment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're only there for six months or something like yeah. that. Five months from now on. So. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, maybe you're just going to stay in the Airbnb for I six months. Okay, let's see. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I mean, like, relatively quick resolution to, the, like, the main event here. Even very quick, even quicker resolution to the whole relationship problem. Yeah, but again, I kind of like it because I don't know, like magic, magic. I'm just a guy standing in the rain asking a girl to forgive him. Oh, I forgive you, Ray. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, we both know, and I'm pretty sure she sort of knows too that it's not so much like that he was cheating on her. Not that you know, in this situation, that it would matter. But I think it was more for her. It was this sense of which I think is something very fitting in superhero stories, actually. Like, oh, wow, you know, I'm just a normal human. You know, and, you know, and he's with someone who can fly. <laughs> like, how can I beat that? Yeah. Right. No, but, you know, in some ways, like... I just need to put out more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, no, but that kind of thing, though, it's, um, I mean, that's part of the charm with, like, the whole Superman Lois Lane thing. Yeah, you know, especially when they phrase it in the way of like, in the term, in the sense of like, you know, yeah, no, I think uh, Superman uh, might be able to deserve her. You know, in the sense like, oh yeah, no, it's not her, it's not, it's not him deserving. Uh, it's not her trying to make him, you know, like worth. It's not her trying to make herself worthy to him, Superman. It's him trying having to sort of like, you know, be worthy of her. And that kind of like set up there is it's kind of fun because like, but she's just a human. And like, no, she's slow as slave. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. It's um, it's charming and it's fun. And and honestly, one of the reasons I think Superman a lot of people, could have anyone. Well, but also one of the reasons people hated the whole the one more day thing with Spider-Man. Because mm. I remember reading before like, um, before Aunt May got shot, like in the whole Civil War arc. It was so sweet with them 
when they're on the run after after uh, Spider-Man switches sides. It's just so sweet having him and Mary Jane with Aunt May just, yeah, trying to make get by. Yeah. And you could really see, and I love this sort of mature, responsible nature of their relationship. Yeah. Like, there wasn't this whole thing with Mary Jane being, like, jealous or something of, like, oh, wow, oh, it's so important that you go out and save people's lives. Right. What about right, me, right. Peter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My yeah. needs. Yeah. It was, like, very mature about it, and without without having Mary Jane feel like, um, how would you say, like, unnecessary? Like, you know, oh, she's mm -hmm. just there? Like, she's, she's yeah. a character. Yeah. And to have it then be, uh, oh, no, wait, they were never married. Yeah. That, like, it's too bad, because I it can work, these things. Yeah, and I think that's something that people are just, because I think it's a little bit more difficult to write that, because, oh, my God, you have to write female characters that aren't just, you know, there to be ogled at, you know, kind of thing. Well, I guess they're the and, Stan Lee method. Which is? No, I remember reading an old Avengers comic that he wrote, and it had this scene where I believe it was uh, Janet, the, you know, Wasp, mm -hmm. meeting this, this other female character. I think, I don't think she was important, but like in terms of like a s established character, but yeah, she meets yeah. her in the street in civilian outfits. Yeah. It's like, Janet! And Hannah, or you know, whatever her name was. And then in the next panel, there's a caption at the top corner that says, after they were done talking about the things women talk about. Oh my God. Yes, and then they go on with the plot and that, and they're like, oh, by the oh, way. Jesus. But I just love that. I just love mm. the caption. Like, well, that's Stanley. You got it. <laughs> oh, oh God. I love that. But no, but I mean, it's, it's both, I feel it's both good and terrible. Yeah, but I think it's just like... It's good because it's like, well, look, I'm not going to pretend to know uh, how, like, like what's the appropriate things they talk about, because it's just going to sound stupid. Oh, my God. So I'm just going to bypass it, and you will just assume they spoke like natural women speak. No, it's just... <laughs> uh, no, I feel like that's that's not the way to do it. No, that's not <laughs> ideal, but I almost, I almost prefer it than having a guy who does not know how women talk to each other. Or, you know, you could ask a woman... So, nah, that's too complicated. I'm, I'm sitting, I'm sitting alone in my room uh, working. <laughs> Which is why I think a lot of these kind of relationships are like that. That it's like you, you create characters who, I mean, again, not to like have a, you know, to say that, that all comic book writers are lonely nerds, but a lot of them are. And a lot of them have this kind of like way of idealizing women or certain women and putting them on a pedestal and the un unattainableness of it kind of is good for that and of course all this like drama around i don't know like uh, to say like that a healthy relationship is not interesting in like a story well no of course not i mean unless there's something else involved but if the if the relationship is the focus it has to be some problem yeah and i feel like that's a lot of the stuff like when I when I I see American women, I, and I feel like this is like a very English American kind of thing, um, there is a certain feel of drama. I mean, again, not every woman is like this, and not every guy is yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like a lot of the stuff that I hear from like relationships outside of Europe, and this is this is excluding England, uh, or like the the English kind of areas. It there's so much focus on this drama in a relationship like like i've been listening to this podcast about like tech and stuff like that and they were talking about how like there are people who put so much emphasis on how to like to like bring their like what to do after they break up and they have an instagram account like do you delete the photos of your with that you had took with your your significant other at the time or do you keep them up and and just all this like like back and forth where at least the the women here in Germany that I kind of associate with wouldn't even think about that kind of stuff. Like, it, we're just all like, I don't care. Like, it's, we, I mean, usually it's like, well, we had a relationship, we broke up, that's it, no drama. Or maybe it's just the relationship I'm in right now is like healthy and not filled with just this ridiculous drama. I mean, right now my girlfriend is with her ex-boyfriend at Ikea because they're still friends. 
you know, and am I like sitting here all jealous and like, oh my God, what are they doing? No, because he's a cool guy and he and I hang out too. You know, and it's just one of those things where like, I feel you'd never see something like that in a comic because it's so rife for drama. And it's like, oh, I can make this quote unquote interesting by putting this stuff in. Yeah, of course. And, but then yeah. it's the usual issue, which is specifically with superhero comics, especially, you know, DC and Marvel. Mm. It's the long running series. Yes, and you can't solve something in a long-running series, because then what else? Exactly. Or if you do solve it, then a later writer will want to mess it up. Mm. But also, you want to like. But as a as a reader, you get invested in these characters, especially like with Peter Parker. Something like, like he's been through so much. Why can't he get a break? Yeah. Well, at least in some form. Like it gets yes. too much. You get apathetic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And that's why you kind of like, that's why you were saying it was so nice to just see Peter and Aunt May and, and Mary Jane just like on the run together and just kind of figuring stuff out together. And you said it was nice. And that's exactly what it is. You're looking and going, thank you. At least some like a, a breath of fresh air, you know? So yeah, or the whole thing is just what the focus is. Because again, if it's yes relationship, then yeah, you have to do something. Yeah. But like one of the more popular ones uh, of the like sort of recent uh, like DC comics has been Super Sons. Have you seen that? Okay. No. It's basically a team up book of uh, Superman's son. Uh, what's called uh, Ken. Uh, I forget his name now. Ken L? <laughs> but yeah, no, but it's. Um, uh, well, either way, his like son and uh, like his and Lois' son. And then uh, what's called Batman's son, Damian Wayne. And it's the most wholesome thing ever. Really? It's so cute because it's basically kid versions of Superman and Batman. Oh, they're kids or are they teenagers? Uh, no, I think they're like 12 or something. Like, like oh, okay. early teens at the most. So, Tweens. Yeah, so like they are kids, you know, not... Yeah, not the teen titans that, you know, look like fully grown adults. Fuck Batman. <laughs> no, but like, but it's super wholesome from what I've seen of it. I haven't bought any of them yet. So, but from like mm. the panels and some of the story times on the CO. It's just fun adventures. It's just, yeah. no, but just simple things and like, that, you know, them visiting Gotham and then what's called uh, getting involved with like, you know, some crime stuff there and solving and, and just a cute thing because, you know, he's, he just shows like the whole difference in, in the parenting as well. Yeah. You know, with, with Damian Wayne being just such a, like, such a tight ass and such an asshole. So Superman's son is just so happy-go-lucky and happy is nice boy scout but as a thing it's there's nothing about i think i think my dad and my my parents might get beginning a divorce it's like no 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 it's, everything's fine yeah anyways all right let's move on to the, like the, the yeah. issue zero yeah, I th I yeah we, yeah, we can like... solve do things we can say yeah, other things in there too then, but yeah yeah so like bloodshot reborn number zero i didn't write a thing for it so i'm just gonna like wing it so we start off at the gate headquarters with all the um other bloodshot the living bloodshots uh getting an upgrade so they're getting the new nanites so that they can transform into uh like the normal skinned i was about to say white skin but the one guy's black so the normal skin thing uh we see the bloodhound i'm gonna call him bloodhound um meeting up with magic and they're kind of cuddling and there's still kind of a little bit of a relationship problem between them and she's all depressed and walking away and all of that stuff and then as a Beautiful plot, plot device. Uh, Bloodshot goes into the bathroom and sees a positive pregnancy test. Uh, a group of uh, criminal looking criminals are meeting up in Ohio because why not? I guess that's a remote. Uh, not at all suspicious that there's like really fancy cars outside of a cottage in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and they're talking about how they want to take down Bloodshot and they're doing stuff like with Project Omen and stuff like that. Uh, so kind of just setting up the next thing. Uh, otherwise, Kay and Festival talk, and they go on a romantic flight around the city, which is pretty romantic. And then Bloodshot confronts Magic about the baby, talking about what if it's a monster like me, and they're like, I don't care, let's have it anyway. And then they're like, cool, everything's good. And then that's pretty much the end. Yeah, and I really like this issue, because it was just a nice sort yeah. of... I kind of like it when it's a bit more calm after like the big event. Yes. Yes, like, I've said this multiple times. My favorite uh, episodes of Dragon Ball are the ones between the fight, between like the arcs. Exactly, but yeah. also in this case, because you know, as fun as it is to sort of end right at the climax, you know, like oh, and then mm. we beat them. I like it when it's like, all right, we beat them, and then what? And this was told in a nice pace and yeah. tied up pretty much all the loose ends and set up 
all these like future things like with those you know bad guys in the cottage and stuff yeah they forgot the dot on bloodshots bloodshots but on, on blood squirts blood hounds face eye oh no on page 167 unreadable zero out of five red light who was the colorist no red dot on, who is the colorist or was it a pencil or thing or maybe the dog can change its appearance too Ah, now it just became a white wolf. Like my little wolf over there. He's been a good boy. He's been sleeping here yeah. on the couch next to me. All right. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say here. I mean, everyone got their, like, normal skin color back. Um, the, the the dog's fine. Magic's fine. I mean, she's pregnant, but I guess that's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I mean, again, um, depends on the, you know, on your economic situation, and uh, you know, is, is the yeah, father um, still in the picture? Yeah, I don't know if like Bloodshot has a job, or I don't know if Magic does. I mean, maybe the dogs is contributing something to the to the family. Like someone else in this room should probably start contributing. <laughs> Such a leech. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's I mean, nice. There's no, yeah, it's just nice to also see like the. Um, the, the, the blood shots, like the other blood shots, just being able to walk around a little bit. I really want to know the Russian blood shots reactions. Cause this is the kind of thing where I just was like, Oh, right. I Cause mean, he's like a Soviet guy. Yeah. I mean, isn't it so cool to be like, go back to, to mother Russia and be like, Oh, why is there a McDonald's here? Ah, uh, oh, no, what a capitalist one. <laughs> Actually, do you know what the, do you know what the, um, the, biggest or like the most like like um fast food restaurants like what company has the most fast food restaurants Subway. in the world you're right yes i because i have heard that before and i was always surprised yeah right like i mean it's not like it's not popular but i was like really they're the biggest huh well i think that's the thing like i think outside of america subway is very popular more popular than like mcdonald's and and burger king especially burger king i mean they just like suck in outside of the of the u.s i guess subway I mean, can be seen like, as the healthier healthier alternative as well yeah like it feels a bit more I mean, if you think about it like, like finland finland has way more subways than the mcdonald's but then again they also have their own mcdonald's so the own type of mcdonald's is called hesburger oh i think most places have something just because you know usually it's enough I mean, Ger room. germany doesn't have their own like fast food oh actually no they i mean there was oh my god there's a thing called kochlöffel which means cooking spoon and they, there's like this one place in Freising that had it and it's i don't even know if they're still open but they made like this like chicken stuff and then they would put um curry powder on their fries and that was the only time i've ever done seen that and i think it's kind of disgusting but yeah whatever so yeah no but um it's kind of nice to see all the people going back to their little areas yeah no exactly and um uh... How do you say? And again, it's all like set up for something, you know? Like it's all set up for mm -hmm. that whole American action movie thing, you know, the whole you're a hard man to find. Not hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in the woods in Canada, it was like working as a lumberjack or something. Exactly. Oh wait, wasn't that like in one of the Wolverine movies or something? Probably. But also but also in the what's called Bloodshot itself. I mean in Harbinger Wars when they get uh, the whole the, you know, the hard hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, he was actually yes, he was a lumberjack too. Oh my god. <laughs> what else can you do out in the woods? <laughs> oh, god, is that, oh even even freaking um actually, have you watched Hilda yet? Oh yeah, true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not all of it yet, but I'm like episode eight, I think. Yeah, the the mom is a graphic designer and she lives in the woods, so don't even start on that. And but even in the in the in the parody like on um in South Park. Right, with the with the, with the, the, the nightmare guy. Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Yeah, he was also just like chopping wood in the um, in the in the woods. Oh, that should. Oh man, if, I, I wish I was a better draftsman because that would be a nice, um, like, nice little fan art piece of just all those kinds of characters in the woods, like working together, yeah. like cutting down. <laughs> Everyone is trying to escape something. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like every every lumberjack is just some character from some sort of like movie like you have like jack reacher or whatever yes. those other like spies things that you have all the all the old james bonds are out there ah that'd be fun all right well let's maybe i'll start wrapping this up i need just to do some cleaning yes. before my girlfriend comes home and yep but, i have another yeah i mean work this, call soon but yeah i mean this was uh like i said this really felt like uh, an event comic 
Yeah. So I'm surprised, you know, they, they didn't do more with it in terms of having like tie-ins. Because maybe then we could have had like the ninja thing. You know, like he could have escaped in that issue and then we would have this one bonus like tie-in issue of ninja. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some other fun stuff like, you know, again, depending on what he could come up with. But yeah, it's just a fun, solid adventure. You know, a few hiccups here and there, but I don't know, I'd say like a four out of five for me, just in terms of a fun, exciting, like blockbuster event, so to speak. Yeah. Hmm. And I'd say a green light. I mean, if you're reading Bloodshot, I mean, you know, yeah. if you've been reading Bloodshot Reborn up to now, of course you want to see like what they were, what's called cliffhangering with the last volume. Yeah. And again, just fun watch. Again, like, it just was like a fun trip, the whole thing. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I feel like, especially this last issue, this last volume just kind of, like, was fun, the idea. I mean, I, I feel like they, I feel like I would have liked to see something more with, like, the whole Ninjak uh, bloodshot, that he was a little bit more, yeah, that, that he was more prominent, that he could, like, have survived a little bit longer, so we could have had a little bit more hijinks with him, because I think that could have been interesting to have, like, this super strong uh, guy. Um also, the question is how much, like, I guess you could kind of explore how much does he retain from himself? Because it kind of felt like a lot of these, these like, the civilians were more like zombies at some point, um, being controlled by some, by the Nanites. Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, for me as well, like, I want to kind of give it a five, but I don't, but I kind of don't like the, a lot of the stuff. So let's say, yeah, four out of five and, of course, a green light, because if you've, if you've gotten to... You know, as far as we've gotten with Bloodshot, you want to read this one too because it's just more of the good stuff. And I feel like it's kind of weird that we still do these kind of like ratings because pretty much every single thing we have is a green light. Well, yeah, I mean, it is an odd thing because it's not like these are separate. You know, it's not like we're doing like the movie reviews where, you know, yeah. the movies aren't connected. Yeah, that would I mean, be more connected to like reason for it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think this is great. I mean, I love I love reading this one. Um, it was quick to read as well. Like, there was a lot of action going on, so we just kind of flew through the pages. So, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. All right. You can discuss this episode on Reddit, tweet Humphrey, or follow us on Facebook. Also, all of our episodes are available on our hosting site, Podbean. Links are in the show notes. Catch us next time for... The first half of Divinity Free Stalinburgs. <laughs>